Hello friends, this video on human reproduction part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Okay, now we will talk about a special type of glands which are exclusively present in females and they play a very important role and that is mammary glands. Now, what are mammary glands? So, these are the glands which are present in the, under the breasts of the females. And what do they do? They help in production of milk. So, you would have seen that when a baby is born, the baby is breastfed. So, the baby feeds on the milk which comes out of the mother's breasts. So, how does the milk production happen? That happens due to the presence of mammary glands in the re breast region. So, these are located in the female breasts and they also exist in pairs. So, there are two mammary glands which exist. So, this produce milk only after childbirth. Now, these glands are capable of producing milk, but they can produce milk only after childbirth. So, not always because this milk production is also dependent on certain hormones and those hormones are, those hormones are produced in the female's body only when she is pregnant. So, that signaling is sent that okay now the time is coming when milk needs to be produced. So, milk gets produced only after childbirth and not always. And then the milk continues to get produced for, for some people it, it is there for 6 months, for some it is there for 1 year, for some it is there even for more than a year. So, what is the composition of mammary glands? It is composed of glandular tissue and fat. So, let us have a look at the detailed structure of the mammary glands. So, this is how a mammary, each mammary gland look like. So, in this mammary gland, you can actually see a lot of fat. So, wherever you see these structures, these cream colored structures, they are all fats. And where is the glandular tissue? The remaining tissues which you see here, they are all glandular tissue. So, let us understand the structure of the mammary gland. So, the, it has a glandular tissue structure where it consists of the mammary lobes. So, where is the mammary lobes? So, here you can see that this entire structure is divided into lobes. For example, this is one lobe. This entire part is one lobe till here. Again from here you have another lobe. So these are the various lobes. So they are known as each of these structures are called is called a mammary lobe. So the next important part is the alveoli. So where do we have the alveoli? So here if you see these structures, these are called the mammary alveoli. These brown colored structures which you see here, they are the alveoli. And alveoli are extremely important as far as the functioning of the mammary glands are concerned. Because alveoli forms the functional unit of the mammary gland. So they are the cluster of cells inside mammary lobes. So if you see, Inside each lobe, so if, if you consider this entire part as one lobe, so if say let us say this is one lobe, again this one is another lobe. So basically this is one lobe but inside one lobe you have numerous alveoli. So these are nothing but group of cells inside mammary lobes. Uh, they are the basic component of the mammary gland. So you can say they are all lined with milk secreting cuboidal cells. So each of them has milk secreting cells. Now because all these cells secrete milk, that is why the entire mammary gland is capable of secreting milk. So you can see that the alveoli are the functional units of the mammary gland. So what happens is these alveoli, there are numerous alveoli and they all will join together to form duct like structures which in turn again join together to form a bigger duct and the bigger duct again, bigger ducts again join together to form a common duct. So that is how the structure is organized inside the mammary gland. So let us see these mammary, these alveoli open into mammary tubules. So where do you have the mammary tubules? So here if you see these mammary, um, these uh, uh, alveoli, they open into small tube-like structures. So that this is how it looks like. Suppose this is alveoli. Again, this is another alveoli, this is another alveoli. So you have these tube-like structures, right? So these tube-like structures are nothing but mammary tubules. And then what happens? These mammary tubules will join together to form mammary duct. So where is the mammary duct? So here we have the mammary duct. 
So many mammary tubules, like here you can see so many mammary tubules, they all join together to form a mammary duct. Several mammary ducts join together to form a mammary ampulla. So where is the mammary ampulla? Somewhere here you have the mammary ampulla. And then finally, several mammary ampulla join together to form a lactiferous duct. So where do we have the lactiferous duct? It is here. So this is the lactiferous duct. And then this lactiferous duct finally opens into the nipple. So here you have the nipple of the mammary gland. So now humans have two complex mammary glands. Each complex gland has several uh, simple glands. So what do we mean by simple gland and complex gland? Simple gland is the one which has just one lactiferous duct. Complex gland is one which has multiple lactiferous ducts which join together to form a common duct which opens into the nipple. So in case of human beings, if you see they, first of all, you have alveoli. So all these units of alveoli, they all have inside their inner lining has got milk secreting cells. So that is why each alveoli will secrete some amount of milk. Now these alveoli join together and open into a mammary tubule. Mammary tubule opens into mammary duct which opens into ampulla and ampulla further opens into the lactiferous duct which finally opens into the uh, nipple. Now, it has been observed that the glandular tissue of each breast is divided into around 15 to 20 mammary lobes. So, when I, when I was telling about the lobes, you will be surprised to know that there are 15 to 20 lobes which exist in each breast. So, that is a big number, right? Again, when you talk about the uh, ducts, now, the, the lower you go, the wider the ducts are. For example, the mam mammary tubules are extremely thin tube-like structures. When they join to form mammary duct, they are little wider. When the mammary duct join to form the mammary ampulla, they, they are even wider than the mammary duct. And finally, when the lactiferous duct is formed, that is the widest. So lactiferous duct is the most wide amongst all the other ducts and milk is sucked out of the lactiferous duct because now when a baby feeds on the breast milk what happens is the baby tries to suck through the nipple. So the food tends to come out through the lactiferous duct. So this is how the structure of the uh, mammary gland is and this is how uh, milk is actually produced. So towards the back side of the mammary gland, you can actually see that this is the, this pink colored structure which you see that is nothing but the chest wall because you need some support at the back side so that I mean the part, the, the breast can actually get a base, a strong base. So this is the chest wall and these parts which you see here, these are nothing but the ribs. These are the ribs. So this forms the backbone of the breast and here you have mostly fatty areas, fatty fats and glandular tissues. So with this we have discussed towards the structure of the male reproductive system and female reproductive system. So I think now we are in a good situation where we can discuss the various events of sexual reproduction. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.